Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. If you're looking for a fast way to charge your power station while in your car or truck, you're definitely gonna wanna check this product out. Now let me take a second to tell you guys what this is and why you'd want it. First off, this is called the Pecron Smart Car Charger. Now this is compatible with other brands. I'll show you guys that later in the video. But this takes your 12 volt battery in your vehicle or even a 24 volt battery and then charges your power station at 500 watts. Now most power stations out of the box come with a 12 volt cigarette charging cable, which is gonna give you around 100 watts charging in your vehicle. Now that's gonna take 10 to 20 hours to completely fill up a large power station. So if you wanna charge faster, this is an affordable plug and play solution. Now this is everything that comes in the box. You get the 500 watt charger, the owner's manual, a small screwdriver, I'll explain why you need that here in a second. You get 15 feet of wiring that has built-in terminals that you connect directly up to your starter battery. It has a built-in fuse and an XT90 connection that plugs into the side of the charger. On the output, you have MC4 connections that connect up to your power station. Now the concept behind this unit is fairly simple. In order to charge a power station faster, you need a higher input voltage. So what this does is it takes the 12 volts of your starter battery and turns it into 42 volts with a peak output of 13 amps, right around 500 watts. Now on this side of the unit, you have an on and off switch. You have your power output cable and also built-in cooling fans. This is the intake side. And then on this side, you have your power input from your starter battery, your exhaust fan, and then over here, you have this cool selection switch. Now this is why it's called the smart car charger. Now you only want to be charging your power station when your car alternator is running. So you have the ability to say, what voltage do you want this to start at? And so I have it currently set to 13.5 volts, but you can select anywhere from 14 all the way down to 12 volts. And so that's why this unit is smart. If the voltage of your battery is below this starting voltage, it will sit idle. So whenever your car is not running, it's not going to charge your power station. But whenever you start it up, the alternator starts charging your battery. This will kick on and also start charging your power station. Now I also mentioned that this is affordable, so checking out Pecron's website, it's on sale right now for $149. Now they've also provided a 10% off discount code for my viewers to drop the price down to only $134. So for a plug and play setup, that is a great price. But enough talk, let's go ahead and show you guys this thing in action. Now I just wired it up, it took me about five minutes. So I have the main positive connected to the positive terminal, I have negative, coming to the chassis ground, which is right here. So usually you have your negative terminal that goes to chassis. So that's where that is connected. So the main positive has the fuse, the main negative goes into the wire loom itself. And then that goes over and connects into the back of the charger. Now I do have it turned on right now and it is not charging. So it's working as it should because I have it set to 13.5 volts. I do not want this you know, killing my starter battery whenever the engine is not running. So let's go ahead and start the engine and see if it starts to charge. Okay guys, I've started the engine. So now this should be charging. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the screen. So it looks like the E1500 is currently charging at around 280 watts right now with the DC to DC converter. Now I was hoping to get a little bit more charging power. So I wanted to mess with some of the settings. So I actually adjusted the knob on the back to the 12 volt level in hopes to get a little bit more power because maybe it's sensing some sort of voltage from the battery. So now we're actually charging at around 450 watts, so a lot more power. So you may have to kind of adjust this as needed if you wanna charge at a faster level. So now that I've turned off the engine, I've verified that the charger is no longer charging the power station, so it's not pulling power from the starter battery, so that's great that that feature works. But basically, it, this is all based on the voltage it senses for how much power that it charges your power station at. So the higher the voltage you have at your battery, the faster that this is going to charge. And you will have to kind of tweak the settings because every single vehicle is different and you'll have to see what yours is doing. But pretty cool. What I want to do is actually do some more testing with different power stations and a standalone battery. I want to test for efficiency, noise levels, things like that. So let's jump into those tests. Okay, so now that I'm back inside, I want to do some more in-depth testing with the smart car charger. In the first test, we'll be testing with a standalone lithium iron phosphate battery to see if we can get the same amount of power input, kind of like a DIY expansion battery using the smart charger. After that, we'll measure efficiency. For example, we'll take the wattage from this battery and compare it to the wattage going in the Pecron to get some sort of efficiency numbers for this unit. I'll also measure the loudness of the fans. 
Now after that, I'm really excited because I want to test other brands to see if they're compatible with this smart charger because this is a really cool device, especially if it works with other power stations. Connecting this up to a 12 volt battery is really easy. You have your main power cable here with your positive and negative terminals that connect to the positive and negative terminal of your battery. You have a built-in fuse, so you don't have to worry about that. The XT90 of this cable plugs into the XT90 port on the charger, and then you turn it on with the power button. Now here's an example of what everything should look like once it's connected. You have your main power cable coming off the battery, plugging into the charger, and then you have this power pigtail coming off. This has a positive and negative MC4 connector. Now when you're connecting it to a Pecoron power station, it comes with a solar charging cable that easily connects right up. Now because we've changed our power source to a standalone battery, we also had to adjust the starting voltage selector switch. Before, when we were running it off a car, you have much higher voltage coming out from your alternator to charge your starter battery, but on a standalone battery, you have a much lower voltage. So what I've done is I've selected the 12 volt or the zero selector option. This gives us a voltage range of 12 to 30 volts. So it should work properly with a standalone battery on this setting. So now everything's ready to go. We're gonna take our cables and connect them together. So they just go one way. It's really easy, positive to positive, negative to negative. And then we are gonna turn on the actual power switch and see if it charges. So it took about 10 to 15 seconds for it to start charging, but now we're getting over 400 watts input using the smart car charger with the standalone lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, what about efficiency of the charger? We're seeing around 372 to 371 watts input, and we're getting about 465 watts coming from the battery. So it's a little bit under 80% efficient. Now in the next test, I wanna measure the loudness of the fans. They seem to run for about 30 seconds and then they turn off for 30 seconds. So let's see how loud these are using my sound meter. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, these fans are fairly loud. So you will have to think about where you place this. But I will tell you that my previous solution, which is this 12 to 36 volt boost converter, did not have any active cooling and this thing got super, super hot. So I had to find a third party solution to cool this down. So having fans built in just makes it such a convenience. So they are loud, but it's more convenient. You just connect it up to your battery, connect up your power station and you're good to go. So yes, the fans are loud, but it's still better than having no fans because something like this, you have to find some sort of contraption to blow air onto it or attach fans and it just doesn't work that well. Well, now that we know the smart car charger works well with the Pecron E1500, I also wanna see if it's compatible with other brands. First, I wanna test with the Bluetti AC200L, then we'll test with the Anchor C1000, and then finally, the EcoFlow Delta II Max. So now I have the AC200L. Now this is the stock charging cable, the solar charging cable with MC4 adapters. And since the smart charger comes with MC4, all you have to do is connect these up. So we're gonna plug in positive to positive. We're gonna plug in negative to negative, and we are gonna turn on the charger. So now looking at the screen of the AC200L, we are charging at over 400 watts. I'm gonna let this run for a couple minutes to see if there are any issues. Okay, so it's been over 15 minutes and we're still getting over 400 watts charging input. So the Pecron Smart Car Charger does appear to be compatible with the Bluetti AC200L, and it's really easy to connect up with the included MC4 adapters with the Bluetti Power Station. Next, I want to test with the Anchor Solix C1000. Now this should be very similar to performance compared to the Anchor Solix F2000, which is the larger brother to this, and also even the Anchor F3800. They all have very similar charge controllers. Now, unfortunately, these do not come with their own solar charging cables, so I will include some down in the video description that you can purchase that make it compatible with the Pecron Smart Car Charger. Once you get the required cables, connecting them up is just as easy as the Bluetti power station. So we're gonna connect positive to positive. We're gonna connect negative to negative. And then we're gonna turn on the Smart Car Charger, and let's see what happens. So taking a closer look at the screen, we are getting slightly above 400 watts input. So this is also working well on the Anchor C1000. Let's go ahead and let this run for about 15 minutes or so and see what happens. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes and the power station is still charging at over 400 watts. So I don't see any compatibility issues with the Anchor Solix C1000. And this also should work with the F2000 and the F3800. So pretty cool to see that this Pecron Smart Car Charger is compatible with other brands. 
Then the final power station that we'll be testing with is the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. Now this one does not come with a charging cable, so you will have to purchase one. Now this is their XT60i charging cable. This is an orange XT60 with a third pin that allows you to get the faster charging input. Connecting the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max is the same exact process. Negative, negative, positive to positive. We're gonna turn on the charger and then we'll see what happens. So taking a closer look at the screen, you can see it's also working on the Delta 2 Max. We're getting over 400 watts charging input. So I'm gonna let this run for a few more minutes and we'll see if there's any issues. So I'm back checking in on this after about 15 minutes. It's still charging at over 400 watts input. So I don't see any issues with the Delta 2 Max. This will also work with the smaller Delta 2 or even EcoFlow's larger power stations. Pretty cool. In the final section of the video, I wanna do some tests on this starting voltage selector switch. Now this is the whole reason they call this the smart car charger. It's because you can select a certain voltage of where this starts and stops. So I have my adjustable power supply here. Let's do some testing. So my adjustable power supply is acting like a 12 volt battery. I have it currently set to 11.9 volts. I'm going to turn on the smart car charger to see if it'll start charging the Pecron. Now it should not do that because I have it set to the 12 volt cutoff. So we'll see as we turn the voltage up when it starts charging. So I just turned on the smart car charger and it looks like the idle power usage is around one watt. So this is very efficient as it's sitting idle and not enabled. So now I'm gonna turn up the voltage above 12 volts and let's see if this starts charging. So we'll go up to like maybe 12.3 volts. Okay, so it's starting to think. We're getting a little bit more power here. Okay, so it jumped up a little bit. The Pecron does take a little bit of time to start charging. It's completely normal for this unit. Okay, there we go. We are up around 100 watts. Now this is not going to function exactly like a battery, but this is just a good way to test the cutoff voltages. So let's turn it off, change to a different voltage, and then start the test again. So now I have this adjusted to the number four setting, which is 13.5 volts. Most alternators are gonna be charging your car around 14.5 uh, to 14.3 volts. So I think this is gonna be the most common setting for most people is this number four setting or 13.5 volts. Let's see what happens. So now I have my power supply set to 12.8 volts to simulate a healthy lead acid battery. And you can see that it's just sitting idle. It's pulling 0.9 watts, so very efficient. Let's go ahead and set it up to 14.8 five to simulate a alternator and let's see how long it takes to start charging okay so there it goes it's the pecron just turned its screen on and it's going to think for a little bit but then it should kick on and start charging so just a few seconds later we are getting the maximum amperage from this unit at 30 amps at 14.5 volts and we're charging at about 360 watts on the Pecron power station. So that voltage setting did work properly. Now I wanna simulate what happens when you turn your car off and the battery voltage drops down to a normal level because the alternator turns off. So let's go ahead and set the voltage back down to eh, maybe 12.9 volts. So then we should see this instantly turn off. There we go. So the voltage selector switch does appear to work properly. Now every single battery and alternator system is going to be a little bit different. So it's important for you to take a voltmeter, measure what your battery is as it's sitting idle, measure what your alternator voltage is as it's charging, and then you'll have to make your adjustment. And I like that there's so many different settings on that adjustment knob. So adjust what works for your particular vehicle and you should be good. Wow guys, this is a really cool product. I've been waiting for something like this to hit the market for a long time. And let me tell you why I'm so excited about it. Well, first off, it's completely plug and play. It comes with the full cabling, the fuses, the terminals, all that. You just connect it up and it's good to go. The next thing is that it's actually compatible with different brands. I hate when you purchase something, you invest a ton of money in something, and it only works with one brand. So something like this that's compatible with multiple options is really cool. It just puts out a certain voltage. You wanna make sure that your power station is compatible with that voltage. And finally, I love how affordable this is. Other options are over $200, 
And this one here comes in at $135 with my discount code. I'll include the link and the discount code down in the video description if you guys are interested in picking this up. Now, I'm really excited to get your guys' feedback on this. Make sure you guys leave comments down below on how you would use it or what your thoughts are on this actual smart car charger from Pecron. And I'll definitely recommend a couple other videos that you guys can check out if interested. Please smash the thumbs up button on the way out. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we see you guys in the next one. We'll see you guys later.